Okay, we're going to talk about blood supply to the brain and answer the questions, what parts of the brain are supplied by the internal carotid and vertebral basal or arteries, and what is the circle of Willis? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I am the noted anatomist. So here are the different arteries that supply the brain that we're going to talk about. And I want to just focus for a second on the internal carotid and vertebral basal or arteries. So the brain is supplied by two arteries, internal carotid and the vertebral basal or artery. So in this lateral view, we're going to pull the brain out and take a look at a line that goes up vertically, uh, kind of obliquely through the temporal lobe and the top of the occipital lobe like that, and show that the internal carotid artery right here supplies the anterior circulation of the brain, or in other words, everything above that dashed line. And the vertebral basal artery, this artery right here, these two vertebral arteries ascend up, and then once they hit the frame and magnum, they join to become the basal artery, and they supply the posterior circulation of the brain. So it looks something like this. This is the scaffolding in which all the other arteries are going to be uh, 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 shelved into to show how that we supply the brain with blood. So let's start with the internal carotid artery and its branches first, okay? So the internal carotid artery, which is right there in that dashed line, okay? And in this lateral view, the common carotid artery bifurcates into an external and internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery ascends up and then goes through the base of the skull. And so there's that base of the skull where the carotid canal is. And so if we zoom in, there's our internal carotid artery and the carotid canal and both on the bottom and in the uh, cranial base, and there's the carotid canal in which the internal carotid artery traverses. So we notice that there's a part of the internal carotid artery in the neck, the cervical region, uh, in the carotid canal, the petrous region, in the cavernous sinus, and then the supply in the brain. So there's basically these four parts to the internal carotid artery. Let's do it again. The cervical part of the internal carotid artery is in the neck, what's shown there that's highlighted the cervical region. Then there's the petrous part, which is going from the carotid canal on the base of the skull to the carotid canal uh, in the um, middle cranial fossa. Between the two is the internal carotid artery, the petrous part. Then the cavernous part is the part that's in the cavernous sinus. So there's a sphenoid bone in a coronal section. In blue is the cavernous sinus, one of the dural venous sinuses flanking either side of the pituitary. And there's the internal carotid artery, the cavernous portion. The only time in anywhere in the body where you see an artery inside of a vein. It's very cool. So let's take a look at this uh, angiogram where you inject a dye into the internal carotid artery and then take an x-ray of it. Where if we zoom in and take a coronal section through this lateral view of the internal carotid artery, there is the internal carotid artery in the cavernous sinus. But watch, it goes and it curves around. And then if we take another cross section, there is the cerebral part of the internal carotid artery. And basically the cerebral part is that part right there where all the other branches that we're gonna talk about come off. There is the internal carotid artery, the cerebral part. And one of the major, uh, not, one of the branches that comes off is called the ophthalmic artery. And as its name implies, goes to the eye. So there is a superior view of the orbit, our internal carotid artery. There's the ophthalmic artery going in through the optic canal and gives rise to all these arteries that go into the orbit. And clinically a really important one is the central artery of the retina that supplies arterial supply to the retina. And if it's occluded because of diabetes or a clot, then blindness or vision problems occur. Uh, another artery that comes off the internal carotid is called the posterior communicating artery that connects the posterior cerebral artery and the internal carotid arteries. It also connects our anterior and posterior circulations on one side. There's our anterior circulation of the brain, and there's the posterior circulation of the brain, and the posterior communicating arteries connect the two together. It's, they're paired one on either side. Then there's the anterior cerebral artery right there that, uh, that supplies the front of the cerebrum. So here's the front of the cerebrum. And there's our internal carotid. And there is one anterior cerebral artery coursing over top of the corpus callosum within the longitudinal cerebral fissure. And it's paired. The anterior cerebral arteries, they're paired. Okay. Um, the distribution of the anterior cerebral artery is the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere all the way back to the parietal lobe. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to make the anterior cerebral artery look yellow because that's the 
the picture I'm going to show is in yellow. So here's a, sa a mid-sagittal section of the brain. There's our internal carotid, and there's our anterior cerebral artery. And there is the anterior cerebral artery coursing over the corpus callosum, and you can see its distribution, okay, right in the midline of the brain. And so here's a mid-sagittal section of the brain, and everything you see in yellow is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery, the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere, all the way back to the parietal lobe. And even in this lateral view of the right side of the brain, there you can see the anterior cerebral artery is supplying the medial aspect of the cerebral hemispheres back to the uh, parietal lobe. All right, now the anterior communicating artery is between our two anterior cerebral arteries right there, our anterior communicating artery. Let's do that again from this anterior view. There are showing our anterior cerebral arteries and shing, whoops, and shing, right there is our anterior communicating artery connecting the two together. Now our middle cerebral artery is right there, and middle cerebral because it's the middle of the cerebrum. So here's the brain in anterior view, there's our internal carotid artery, and there is our middle cerebral artery right within that lateral sulcus. And so the distribution is through the lateral aspect of the cerebral hemispheres, except for uh, the superior portion of the frontal and parietal lobes and for the inferior part of the temporal lobe. Let's see what that means. Okay, so here's the lateral view of the brain. There's our middle cerebral artery, and there's its distribution. And so if we look at this picture again, there's the everything in pink is showing the distribution supplied by the middle cerebral artery, all except the superior portion of the frontal and parietal lobes, and in the inferior portion of the temporal lobes. And you can see the anterior cerebral and posterior cerebral arteries supply those two areas. Okay, so now let's focus on, there's our internal carotid artery. Now let's go to the vertebral basal arteries. Um, and they're consisting of the vertebral and the basal arteries. So now let's take a look at the vertebral arteries and its branches. So the vertebral artery is located there. It's paired, one on either side, and it arises from the subclavian artery and it ascends up the neck through the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae, through the foramen magnum and into the skull. Um, and so there is the vertebral artery. There's the base of the skull, the occipital bone. There in dot dashed line, I've added the foramen magnum and the vertebral artery comes up, traverses the foramen magnum, fuses with the other vertebral artery and then become the basal artery. A branch off the vertebral artery is the pica, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which is I've just drawn on there. So let's take a look at this lateral view, and there is our cerebellum, and there's the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, and there's the territory supplied, the bottom back of the cerebellum. We also have the anterior spinal artery, and we take our two vertebral arteries and we add the anterior spinal artery there. It then courses in front of the spinal cord. There's our two vertebral arteries, and there's our anterior spinal artery. It supplies the front of the spinal cord. Now let's go to the basal artery and its branches. And so the basal artery is a basically taking our two vertebral arteries and they come together to make the basal artery. So here again is our two vertebral arteries and they come together to make the basal artery that courses all along vertically along the pons between the pons and the clivus of the skull. Branches that come off include the anterior inferior cerebellar artery there or the iaca. And there we have the cerebellum, and there's the anterior inferior cerebellar artery that supplies the front and bottom of the cerebellum. We also have the superior cerebellar artery that's more rostrally located, and there is our cerebellum, and there's our superior cerebellar artery that supplies the top of the cerebellum. And there we have uh, the superior cerebell cerebellar arteries also shown in this view. Then the very end of the basal artery is showing the posterior cerebral artery. And the posterior cerebral artery is right there and it supplies the back of the cerebrum. Now I just want to take a little tangent for a second. You see there's the posterior cerebral artery and there's the superior cerebellar artery. Shing! Cranial nerve three exits between the two of them. So if there's ever a baryaneurysm on the posterior cerebral or superior cerebellar artery, you can push on that cranial nerve three and have eye deficits. All right, so the posterior cerebellar artery's distribution is through the occipital lobe, our primary visual cortex, and to the temporal lobe, the posterior median 
portion and the inferior portion. So here's a mid-sagittal section of the brain. There's our basilar and posterior cerebral artery, and there is the distribution of the posterior cerebral artery. In this picture of the mid-sagittal view, the posterior cerebral artery in blue supplies the occipital lobe, and then that posterior medial surface of the temporal lobe. And in the lateral view, you can see the posterior cerebral artery in blue supplying the occipital lobe and also the bottom or inferior portion of the temporal lobe. So now we've done the basilar artery, let's talk about the circle of Willis. So what's the circle of Willis? Well, it's collateral circulation between our two internal carotid arteries and the vertebral basilar arteries. So here we have that same picture, our two internal carotids and the basilar arteries, and then it's the collateral connection formed between those and our communicating arteries. That's the circle of Willis. And it's named after this anatomist named Thomas Willis. He's from the 1600s. He's, he named the circle of Willis. He also was one who numbered our cranial nerves, 1 through 12. We still do it. He actually also is the one who put the word mellitus and diabetes mellitus because he said, hey, that smells like honey. Let's call it the diabetes, a lot of urination that smells like honey. Okay. Uh, the circle of Willis provides redundancy. It permits circulation should a part of the circle be occluded. What do we mean by that? Well, here's that picture again, and you can see the circle of Willis in that dashed area. Now, let's say that right there is an occlusion of the anterior cerebral artery within the circle of Willis. So blood comes up through the internal carotid artery and shing, blocked. So blood on this side cannot get through to the anterior cerebral artery because it's blocked. But now watch that blood comes in from the contralateral internal carotid artery, and then that blood can not only go to the anterior cerebral artery on its side, but also go across the anterior communicating artery and go up to the other side of the cerebrum. And so this circle of Willis provides redundancy within the circle. Now, if you go outside the circle, these terminal branches become end arteries. So if you block them, that's how you get ischemic stroke. But if you block within the, the circle of Willis, you can get this redundancy. Pretty cool, eh? Um, and the circle of Willis is formed around the optic chiasm and pituitary gland. So there is a circle of Willis in red, and then in yellow is the optic chiasm, which is the cross formed by our two optic nerves. And there's the pituitary gland in infundibular stalk as well. The cir circle of Willis is around them. And so if we look at this lateral view, that dotted line, everything above it is provided by the internal carotid artery and its branches. Everything below it is supplied by the vertebral basilar artery and its branches. And there are all those branches. And that, my friends, is the blood supply to the brain in a nutshell. <laughs> mm -hmm.